a very good morning to all of my dear listeners all of my dear friends today we are here to proceed through the life of our master sri ramakrishna paramhansa dev and for few last weeks we were reading what happened how the guru shishya uh duet began right the duet which we all knew one party was obviously sri ramakrishna paramhansa dev and the other one was swami vivekananda so right now we are actually uh, mentioning him as narendra nath and i suppose this chapter as we will proceed through further will give or shed light upon how this transformation happened from narendra nath to swami vivekananda so let's proceed we knew that uh, in the last from the last episode that in um, swami vivekananda no narendra nath actually met second time sri ramakrishna so what was the actual thought process after that we will come to know in this chapter so let's begin thoughts like this occupied my mind during the whole of that day but he became quite another man after this incident and as on the previous occasion treated me with great kindness and cordiality his behavior towards me was like that of a man who meets an old friend after a long separation he seemed not to be satisfied with entertaining and talking all possible care of me this remarkably loving treatment engrossed my attention all the more at last finding that the day was coming to a close i asked his leave to go he seemed very much dejected at this and gave me his permission only after i had promised to come again at my earliest convenience during his third visit narendra nath feared no better though from the first he was determined not to be influenced sri ramakrishna took him that day to the adjacent garden of jadunath mallik after strolling for some time they took their seats in the parlor soon the master fell into a trance and as narendra watched he was suddenly touched by him narendra immediately lost all outward consciousness when he came to consciousness after a while he found that the master was stroking his chest though narendra was ignorant of what had happened in the meantime the master learned many strange things regarding him referring to this incident he said later on i asked him about his antecedents and whereabouts his mission in this world and the duration of his mortal life he dived deep into himself and gave fitting answers to my questions they only confirmed what i had seen and inferred about him those things shall be a secret but i came to know that he was a sage who had attained perfection a past master in meditation and that the day he learned his real nature he would give up the body by an act of will through yoga it will be interesting to know what revelations the master had regarding narendra before the latter's arrival at dakshineshwar this is how he described them one day i found that my mind was soaring high in samadhi along a luminous path it soon transcended the stellar universe and entered the subtler region of ideas as it ascended 
higher and higher i found on both sides of the way ideal forms of gods and goddesses the mind then reached the outer limits of that region where a luminous barrier separated the sphere of relative existence from that of the absolute crossing that barrier the mind entered the transcendental realm where no corporeal being was visible even the gods dared not peep into that sublime realm and where contained to keep their seats far below but the next moment i saw seven venerable sages seated there in samadhi it occurred to me that these sages must have surpassed not only men but even the gods in knowledge and holiness in renunciation and love lost in admiration i was reflecting on their greatness when i saw a portion of that undifferentiated luminous region condensed into the form of a divine child the child the child came to one of the sages tenderly clasped his neck with his lovely arms and addressing him in a sweet voice tried to drag him tried to drag his mind down from the state of samadhi that magic touch roused the sage from his superconscious state and he fixed his half open eyes upon the wonderful child his beaming countenance showed that the child must have been the treasure of his heart in great joy the strange child spoke to him i am going down you too must go with me the sage remained mute but his tender look expressed his assent as he kept gazing on the child he was again immersed in samadhi i was surprised to find that a fragment of his body and mind was descending on earth in the form of a bright light no sooner had i seen narendra than i recognized him to be that sage so my dear friend today i am stopping here and i wish that i would be able in the future to serve you all in this way that i will get the chance to read the next part of this journey again with this good hope today and bidding you goodbye shubhayo bhavatu